Everybody, welcome to another episode of the Men of Zen. Where's my theme song, man. Your theme song. I didn't record it yet. I was gonna put that in afterwards. Oh, oh I, was, I want to sing along. To you it. mean this theme song? Hit that shit, me in the future. Do it. Wow, that's such a good song we just <laughs> listened to. Man, what a fucking wild I ride. Dig giant robots. You <laughs> dig giant robots. Chicks. You know what this dig. show is? Because I honestly didn't. I had no fucking <laughs> idea. You told me to listen or that we were doing this this series, and I was like, uh I was I was actually I was talking to a guy at work about it. He's a really big anime nerd who like yeah. just joined up and I was like, Hey, have you ever heard of a show called Megus XLR? And I, he was looking it up on his phone, like Megus, and I was like, I think like Megus, like Mage? I was like M A G U S like a like a you know, like an evil warlock wizard. <laughs> and that's what we were looking up and I was like, No, I don't see it. I was like, What the fuck? And then I went, Wait, hold on. I think I know what he's talking about. As soon as uh we did find something that was like giant robot and I was like Oh yeah, okay. Of course. Come on, man. You I know, know what he's talking about. You don't know about the an- about the the super cool cartoon about the giant mech with the car no, for a head. I didn't. Honestly, I never once watched this on Toonami or otherwise. The first time I heard about this show was when you talked about it. I don't know. Maybe you brought it up like a year ago or so, and I was like, "The fuck, dude! This show is awesome, dude." We're talking about Megas XLR. Nice, Coop. Nice. <laughs> Dude, fucking I I feel like this is one that you definitely enjoyed more than me. <laughs> you know, that's fair. Like I can't help that I'm blessed with having great taste, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. Like this show wants to target one specific audience and I don't think it was I don't know. There's just something about it that is it's it's incredibly late 90s like cartoon animation Mm -hmm. like they did this shit like on purpose they could not have been like hey we want it to look like this which is exactly what they decided to do is make it look like that yeah i think it is a product of its time it feels like because it came out in 2004 yeah so yeah i mean i you look at it you're like okay that's definitely early 2000s animation um they you know, the characters are a little disproportioned. You know, the main character, Coop's like a giant of a man uh, in comparison to Jamie and then even Kiva. Mm-hmm. The characters are all very, like, distinct looking. Uh, they're very, like, they're very easy to tell, like, like, like who they Kiva are. Kiva looks like she would be a character ripped straight out of fucking, uh, what is it? There was, like, a show for girls. It was something about, like, fairies. Or they were like a... Oh, I know what show you're talking about. I don't remember what it was called. But I think it's I know like what you're talking about. It's like right on the tip of my tongue. I can see the logo and I can't think of what it was called. Kiva was meant to look like... Well, one of the main characters, Kiva, was meant to look like... Yeah, like someone from the future. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, she is from the future. Like yeah. her hairstyle, her makeup, her attire. Like, I guess. Yeah, like the, the, the three characters together, this trio of main... Of, of leads is... I, I love them. They have such a really fun dynamic. Uh, you have Harold Koop, Kuplowski, uh, the main character of the show, as well as the pilot of Megas, uh, the robot from the future. Uh, he's just a big dude. He's He loves to eat. He loves to play video games. He loves wrestling. He's just a big goof. He he's the nicest dude you can he think likes of. Likes watching cars go fast and oh. left, real <laughs> fast and real left. Uh, he does like NASCAR a bit. <laughs> he likes monster trucks, um, wrestling. The dude, the dude is genuinely a good guy, but puts himself in a lot of bad situations by accident due to his 
uh, stupidity and his inability to kind of think over the situation that he is in. Yeah, yeah, he really doesn't. But that's like, that's the point is like, that's who he's supposed to be. You know, this this big, fun, kind of rotund dude. But at the same time, he's incredibly like comfortable with being him he does not give a fuck what anyone else thinks and not we, we can respect that in this day and age everyone should try to be more like coop yeah you know but smarter um <laughs> <laughs> uh, then of course you have jamie uh his best friend of many many years he's very small like skinny to be honest he kind of looks like a drug dealer um but like he's obsessed with money with girls but like he's got coops back he's got adhd he's, he's got adhd <laughs> uh he's a coward uh, in comparison to coop but like he has had his moments where he he has gone you know he's gone to help coop he stepped out of his comfort zone to help coop and of course the final character of the trio is kiva andrew uh she is from the future from the year 3035 uh, she went back in time with the robot Megas. I'm sorry. She went back in time to find the robot Megas that got sent back in the past uh, to help with the future war with the Glorfed. Uh, we, we will get to them in just a sec. And basically, the three of them together help uh, try to defend the state of New Jersey <laughs> as well as the planet Earth and uh, basically try to get keep Coop out of trouble as best they can mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and man like the voice actors playing these guys are just absolutely insane it's phenomenal of course we have steve bloom who plays jamie first and foremost i didn't know. even realize that was steve bloom until i read this right that's it's absurd you know the guy who plays like fucking wolverine and get this spike spiegel from cowboy bebop now hear me out we have wendy lee who plays kiva she's done a ton of work in anime that's really relevant like akira and here's my favorite thing faye valentine from Ooh. cowboy bebop oh shit. two of your main cast outside cowboy bebop once again meet up in a <laughs> in just a in in the strangest of ways like oh my god that's awesome it's so cool uh she's done work uh for uh, digimon adventure Roroni kenshin uh, Bleach, Love Hina, also Outlaw Star. Holy shit. Like, uh, she, uh, uh, does, uh, she does some of the redubs for Sailor Moon and the new Sailor Moon Crystal series. That, Fucking that's, crazy. Yeah, um, do we have anything about, uh, David Deleuze? Yeah, I was uh, actually, I was just looking into him. So, it seems like he hasn't had a whole lot of, like, voice acting roles. Most of his stuff is really, um... Uh, he was a, a, a recurring character in Stargate SG-1. Uh, he was in the, um, the, 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 like, the 90s uh, series Third Rock from the Sun. Uh, or was that the 90s Third Rock? Did you ever watch that? I feel like that was. I watched a little bit of it, but I wasn't too into that. I feel like that was a 90s thing. Yeah, Correct me I, I if I'm so. wrong here, but I think it is. Um, but he did, like, a lot of live action stuff, it looked like, honestly. Um let me look Ooh. down here. We also have Clancy Brown as the Warmaster Gorath of the Glorfed. Uh Clancy Brown, very distinguished actor in the uh, you know, norm in this in the standard or normal acting space as well as a voice actor. Yeah. He's got a very unique voice, which is amazing. Yeah, uh, yeah, it is. He's done a lot of really cool things. And then of course we have Kevin Michael Richardson as the Glorfed commander. Uh separate character, not the Warmaster. Um his voice <laughs> also very very similar um i know he's done a couple other voices in the show as well uh but yeah the voice cast for the show amazing and this is a show that was on cartoon network and toonami you know yeah. it's not technically an anime but like it plays a lot of one of the reasons i love the show is that there's so many parodies mm -hmm, in the show mm -hmm. and we'll get to those later um but it's it's very much like that weird middle ground between anime and cartoon to me yeah it this is definitely a mix of both and i think that's unique but it's animation style is definitely like they wanted to hit 90s cartoon and they did that and mm -hmm. which might be why it didn't appeal to me so much because of like maybe it was just my age where like I was a little too old for cartoons. Right. Like at least cartoons that looked like that. So I probably put a lot more judgment on it going, eh, 
Like, that's not for me. I wanted badass anime. You know, I'm right. watching Toonami. I'm like, hell yeah, give me that good shit. But uh, then they give me Megas XLR, and I'm like, eh. Um, I feel like I would have liked it more if I had seen it back in its heyday. And I think that's why it has a special place in my heart, because I did watch it. Actually, you know what? I think I was in early high school. I, I remember watching it when I was younger, but then like really getting to see the show when high school during uh when Toonami had their streaming service. Yeah. I don't know if it's still a thing now, but I remember watching all of Megas XLR on their streaming service online. And I just, I absolutely fell in love with it. I laughed. Mm -hmm. it, it was such a great time, but you what know, is Brent... great about this is that yeah. this is all just on YouTube. So yeah. if you want to go watch this, you can just search Megas XLR episodes on YouTube. There's a channel or two that has like the whole thing on yep. it. A hundred percent. Now, the only thing is that every once in a while, you'll have a couple minutes of like dub over, like there'll be music playing. Yeah, over like what's they happening. play their own like theme music a yeah. little bit at the beginning, a little bit at the end. I but... think it's just due to copyright issues. So they yeah. can keep the video up. Yep. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, you're getting you're seeing like 90 percent of the episodes mm -hmm. and it, it's. Absolutely. I think it was worth it. Yeah I, yeah, I think so, especially since it's free. You don't need to get a, uh, get a special streaming service for it. But, mm -hmm. Brent, tell us a little bit about Megas XLR. Yes, what is Megas XLR? Well, I'll tell you what. It is an American animated television series created by Jody Schaefer and George Kerstick from Cartoon Network. The series originally was titled Lowbrow and revolves around the two teenage slackers, Mechanic Coop and his best friend Jamie, who find a mecha robot from the future called Megas, short for mechanized earth guard attack system in a new jersey junkyard coop modifies megas and replaces his head and control center with a classic muscle car and names him x xlr which is short for extra large robot <laughs> uh, codenamed avatar the megas was originally a prototype assault unit uh, mech built by the glorfed as a coup de gras to the human race however the earth coalition captured it and kiva spent two years modifying it into a human unit mech as the last hope for the coalition and mankind against the glory. Kiva installed a time uh, time drive unit, hoping to send Megas back to the year 3035 during the Battle of the Last Stand, which was humanity's last failed major offensive against the Glorf, and hopefully change the outcome of that war forever. Together with Megas' original pilot Kiva, they must defend Earth from the evil alien race called the Glorf. The series is an homage and parody of mecha anime, uh, many other things on top so of many. that. Uh, Kirstic was originally one of the co-creators of MTV's Downtown, which I heard that did really well. Oh, there's actually a really funny, like, re reoccurring gag in the show um, about MTV. So one of the big things is there's a music station called Pop TV, and the symbol for Pop TV in the show looks very similar to mm. MTV, and it's a reoccurring gag in the yeah. show that Pop TV's satellites, their buildings, their events always get destroyed in every episode oh, man. because MTV canceled downtown. Uh, and of course the creators of downtown now work on megas and i guess they were a little oh, salty yeah. about that so every yep. episode they have pop tv or mtv <laughs> being destroyed in some way Boom! suck it nerds you know uh, that that's just fun writing for me yeah that's that's funny i actually i did not know that <laughs> well a little bit more about the show uh while playing video games schaefer and karstick received the idea of an animated series where the main character would pilot a giant robot utilize, uh, utilizing his video game skills. The pilot episode Low Brow was shown in 2002 during Cartoon Network's Cartoon Cartoon Weekend Summerfest to determine which pilot would become, the, uh, become a new Cartoon Cartoon. It was the most popular among viewers. It aired on the Toonami block from May 1st, 2004 to January 15th, 2005 for two seasons, totaling 26 episodes, before being canceled due to low ratings. That hurts me mm -hmm. and i will say this before we get too far into it unfortunately the show is canceled before they have a definitive ending right so the ending i think to the show is a really cool ending um i think it was something that the the animators knew it wasn't going to get renewed for a third season so they went all out for the last uh two episodes and I think they did an amazing job of it. Yeah. But unfortunately, it still doesn't wrap up the show. It kind of just, you know, has the main characters moving on to the next 
you know, next day, next adventure, next villain, mm-hmm. but there's no definitive ending, which I mean, some people might like, uh, may like that. Others like myself, I kind of wish it would have gotten a real ending if it got canceled, since it got canceled. But right. unfortunately back in the day, that always, that wasn't always guaranteed. Sometimes you just didn't, uh, you weren't able to give the ending you really want. Unfortunate. Yep. Uh, Jody Schaefer had this to say during an interview in 2012 with Comic Art Community. Well, literally what happened was, while we were playing video games, I told George that it boiled down to its most basic. What I wanted to see on TV was a big, fat, screaming idiot driving a uh, giant robot. It sort of snowballed from there. George came up with the Glorfed. Chris designed the original Megas concept. It was a really collaborative effort. Uh, Basically, we knew we wanted to portray everything we got a kick out of and look for ways to incorporate it. We had all this, uh, we had all the usual influences, giant mecha, pro wrestling, cars. We loved them all and wanted to see them all mashed into one show. This really is a love letter to a bunch of different, a um, so bunch many. of different shows, a bunch so of different many. fandoms. Uh, almost every episode, there's, there's something. something. Yeah, it's it, it was crazy. Absolutely. And, I'll, and we'll get to the Easter eggs near the end of the show. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I got them all listed right here. <laughs> well, I hope so. There's, there's a couple, at least for sure, that I'm like, I hope you, you brought up for sure. So we'll we'll definitely get to those. The Glorf sieged uh, the Earth Coalition lunar base and broke through the base's cloaking shields and defenses. Kiva prepared to send Magus back in time to the Battle of the Last Stand, despite the doubts of her captain. However, as Megas creates a temporal warp uh, to travel through, the Glorfed Mech Corps breach the lunar base and destroy the defenders. En route to the temporal warp, Kiva began to transfer herself into Megas's cockpit through a tunnel connection with her, pers- uh, with her personal mech. Under direct orders from Warmaster Gorath, Glorfed ships attempted to cut off Kiva and Megas by focusing their firepower onto them. Even with drone robots protecting them from the energy shields, Megas's head was blown off by heavy Glorfed fire, and Kiva was forced back into her mech as the cockpit connection was severed. Megas was then thrown into the time warp and landed on the junkyards of New Jersey in the 1930s, where it lay malfunctioned and remained deactivated throughout all of those years until 2004. A coupe found repaired and customized it, becoming the XLR with the coop's car serving as the replacement unit head and that's uh <laughs> that's wild to me that he fucking has a car for the fucking thing's head oh right and it's really funny that the controls w- in it are never the same oh yeah no every episode it feels <laughs> like the controls are different yes. in some way there's like a he'll go like hmm what should i do here and there'll be like a dashboard with a bunch of buttons that say don't do that or super <laughs> extra bad button or yeah uh missiles or more missiles and none of it makes sense i mean some of it i guess barely so this thing fights like a. Uh, like if you've fuck how to put it like the megazord from power rangers yeah but actually like accurate and fast yep and like smooth moving like this robot is a fucking smooth criminal yet at the same time all he's doing in the cockpit is like turning the steering wheel left yeah, there's the he he controls with the or steering wheel with a, the, or the with stick a stick or a ps2 or controller a controller or yeah. a super nintendo controller like there's a bunch of different like game pads in this mm-hmm. there's actually like an arcade stick there's um like an old school like uh atari controller with like the stick and the button that he's using mm-hmm. and like he just you watch him fight and he's like spamming buttons <laughs> all over his cockpit, but yet the robot fights incredibly well. Uh, he incorporates a lot of wrestling moves. There's lasers, elbow missiles, drops. elbow <laughs> drops, uh, you know, Batista bombs. Like he is, it, it's just funny watching him fight. Cause he's usually like screaming um, <laughs> or like he head, like he head butts a button on his cockpit. Owl like from the top rope. Uh, he, um, when he charges in, you just hear the car engine rev, and you just hear a lot of car noises throughout yep. the fight too, because his the head is a car still. Yeah. And um, sometimes in, during the quiet moments where like, he's just like staring down the enemy, you'll just hear the car, the car just idling. <laughs> it's and you just like uh, it's it's a it's a fun concept. But let's talk about Megas. Uh, Megas is a tall, relatively simple but sturdily designed war mecha. 
Uh, the majority of its designs are similar to the Glorfed War Mechs due to the, it being originally a Glorfed prototype, but it contains elements similar to Earth Coalition's War Mechs due to reverse engineering and refitting. Also, there are some parts added by Coop as well as the removal of some others. The prototype version was certainly uh, painted like other Glorfed Mechs, military green or metallic gray, brown, yellow stripes. It is also obviously the prototype Megas had many more Glorfed Mech features like a neck that coming out of the chest, straight back fins, blockier biceps and quads. The right arm was a Gatling gun and the other had, the other had three fingers like the Glorfed themselves. The Earth Coalition redesigned and removed many Glorfed features while making it more uh, of a human design. Mm -hmm. uh, Megas, like I said, is equipped with a many, many weapons, with the basic being a Gatling guns, laser guns, missiles, and rocket launchers installed all over its body. It also has buzz saws, flamethrowers, various destructive weapons inside of it. Some of the weapons used in the series are a uh, pixelizer gun, <laughs> reducing the target into a pixelated oblivion. Right. This is the first ever weapon used in the episode Test Drive, but it is never shown again. Yeah, that's um, fucking, it's broke as fuck. Are right? He gets rid of a house nearby and he's like, uh-oh. <laughs> there's, there's a fucking shit ton of uh, weapons here. We're not necessarily going to list oh, all yeah. of well, them. Like, we can but... go quickly, like the Jammer gun, uh, a, a stage with sonic speakers that produce from the torso. Basically, he sings karaoke and it creates a sonic uh, vibration. Um, the cool giant energy sword, uh, Phoenix fire, EMP, torpedo, flame hands. Like he can create <laughs> burning like... Burning finger. Yeah, burning finger, literally. <laughs> uh, arm flamethrowers, more fire. Uh, rocket punches, DMV rampage oh, mode. I didn't realize he was sentinel. Rocket punch. Right. Rocket punch. <laughs> or Android 16. <laughs> rocket punch. Yeah. Um, oh my God. The oh, DMV rampage mode. I love DMP, DMV rampage mode. He literally opens all parts in order to get revenge on the DMV. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, he, there's a lot of great funny moments. This shows a comedy as well as an action, in my opinion. Uh, let's see. Freeze gun, a master blaster, a light gun blaster, wave motion gun, beam lasers. Um, and then Iron Maiden, a temporary sword he possessed that was literally a chainsaw sword. So many weapons that are used one time and then just somehow he keeps making others pop out of the same spots as these. They're too fucking busted, man. Yeah. They're, they're good as shit. Like every single one of those would be crazy. Now, given some of the like foes that the Megas goes up against, um, I don't know. Some of it, actually, a lot of it is probably overkill. Like, I mean, so the 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 first one that jumps out at me every time, even though he's early in the series, is the what's his fucking name? The the guy that is basically Modok from Marvel. Oh, uh, Magnanimous. Yeah, Magnanimous. Yeah, Magnanimous. And fucking, he can't say his name right ever. He's like Magna Magnerman. Uh, <laughs> Magnanimous. Ma yeah, like he just fucking keeps saying some other shit, and he never gets it right. But he never says the same name twice. He keeps calling <laughs> him something different. Ooh, speaking of Magnanimous, um, amazing job. Like I said, uh, he was based off a of Modok from the Marvel series. Yep. Uh, and he's voiced by Bruce Campbell. Yes, he is. And he's even designed to look a little like Bruce Campbell. Yep. It's hilarious. It's like, that's, fucking crazy. That's one of the very, one of the many, many pop culture references you will see in this show. Yeah, I know. In one of the, uh, the, the part of that interview that I uh, read over earlier today, he was talking about how he's like, dude, I still geek out over the fact that we got Bruce Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the, I think he was only in like the second the th or third episode. Yeah, it like, was early. He's super. The fact that they were able to get someone like that big mm -hmm. to star in the show that early, I do think that just shows how popular that show really was. Like, you well, know, not even so been. much like, yeah, no, yeah, that it could have been, absolutely. But just the way this show got its start is not normal at all uh they, they did not follow any of like the typical procedure despite its low ratings the series was met with positive reception and was ranked at number four on toon zones tunes of the 2000s top five cartoon network originals there have been various fan efforts and petitions to revive the show since its cancellation i have contributed to those it took them a while to come to a decision and tell us they had Teen Titans and Ben 10 in their roster, and though our ratings were doing on par with theirs, Cartoon Network felt that they didn't need three in-house shows that went after the same basic demographic. 
we also skewed a little older, and that wasn't a good thing back then. That is unfortunate. Yeah, Ben 10 and Teen Titans, don't get me wrong. Great shows. The original Ben 10 was awesome. Yep. Original Teen Titans was great. These newer remakes that they keep coming out with of Teen Titans and Ben 10, just come on, just ben stop. Ben 10 was still pretty popular. Well, I'm talking about like the original Ben 10. They've had like different spin-offs. Oh, and, I know, but like I'm saying, sequel like, shows. Like and... Ben 10 stayed popular for a long time, even oh, yeah. with like the spin-offs and stuff. So I feel like they made a right move, like they made the right call for their network. But it would have been cool to let them at least do like a final season, right? For Megas, but I mean, I get it. Like they saw the potential that Ben had, Ben Ten had for like toys and marketing and all sorts of shit and the demographic that it reached was a little younger which is gonna get kids to say mommy daddy i want toys dude give Where... me a megas xlr <laughs> statue like <laughs> right. give me the mega statue i will absolutely like show that off right but you were an older age demographic that wasn't gonna do that you weren't gonna bug your mom and dad until you got that thing because you're smart enough to know they're going to say no. I don't know. My dad was kind of a wimp. <laughs> <laughs> he basically like, what'd your mom say? No? Well, then yes. <laughs> yep. Oh, my God. Um, That's fucking funny. Right. Since it took so long to tell us, we had already sort of figured it out by the time the news came. There was no talk of resurrection at first. Mainly, we just wanted to move on to the next thing. A while later, though, we began to reflect on how cool it was and how we still had stories to tell, said Schaefer during the previously mentioned interview. In late 2012, fans of the show on Twitter started using the hashtag BringBackMegasXLR. The co-creator, George Kerstak, and director, Chris Prynoski, announced that they would bring back the show, seeing as MegasXLR had been written off by Cartoon Network, studio Titmouse Inc. Yeah. would have to get the rights to the uh, would have to get the rights to the show. On April 29th of 2013, Kerstack posted a tweet saying that he and Chris were having a meeting at Titmouse to discuss bringing back the show along with Motor City. However, in 2014, uh, during an interview, Kerstack was quoted as saying, "Megas was written off as a tax loss." and as such cannot be exploited, at least domestically in any way, or the network will get into some sort of tax legal trouble. Boo. So they literally couldn't bring it back if they wanted to. That's just such bullshit, all for tax reasons. Right, yep, like they killed it dead. So the only thing I feel like they could have potentially done doing some sort of soul successor or renaming the sequel, show though? slightly like Aqua Teen liked to do. Like, I wonder if they could have gotten away with like Megas double XLR. Ooh, that actually would have been a cool title. Right? <laughs> double XLR. Triple XLR. <laughs> the biggest XLR. Like Grande XLR. <laughs> He's shopping in the large aisle, boys. Watch out. What's up, gamers? Birds and Swords here. I'm Micah. And I'm Alyssa. As part of the Barn Media Group, we bring you anything and everything from the world of video games. Are we experts? No. But do we play a lot of video games? <laughs> Hell yeah, we do. So come check out our gaming podcast, Birds and Swords, for insight, opinions, top lists, and all the fun that comes with talking about games. Come laugh with us. Or at us. So bring your bird and your sword. Because it's birds and swords. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom-picked for you, more scheduling flexibility, and at a more affordable price. 
Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com forward slash the barn. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash the barn. I want to talk about Curse Stick real quick. There isn't a ton of information on either one of these. Actually, fucking Schaefer has nothing. There's huh. fucking zip on that boy. Kirstick is an American director, screenwriter, and producer known for his work in the science fiction, comic book, and animation genres. Kirstick has scripted for video games, like with Electronic Arts. He's done graphic novels for DC Comics, episodes of the George Lucas CG hit series Star Wars The Clone Wars. He was a story editor on the Emmy-nominated Downtown and co-creator of Megas XLR. Kirstick also served as a writer on the scrapped Gonzo production of Goni and the Five Killers, along with Kingdom Come scribe Mark Wade and Afro Samurai producer Eric Cauldron. He was uh, born in a small Midwest town. What up, Midwest? Hey. Uh, Kirstick hey. traveled the world following the visions jammed into his head by the likes of Ray Bradbury, George Lucas, and Stan Lee. Eventually making his way to New York City, Kirstick attended the prestigious School of Visual Arts. It was during his time at SVA that Kirstick wrote and directed The Last Actor, a sci-fi film about a Shakespearean troupe's final performance when winning the coveted CINE Golden Eagle. The last actor went on to win over a dozen more awards worldwide. I feel like he went just like a pretty mundane path. You know, he didn't do anything overly crazy. He just, he went to school, got a kick-ass job. That's, you know, back in the day, that was pretty easy to do. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is true. Not, not so much any, anymore now. At, I at suppose. Least. Honing his craft. Uh, Kirstick spent the next few years on the sets of indie movies and television series while pulling double duty as a writer and editor of the influential cyber culture magazine Access. I think that's what it's called, how it's pronounced, Access. Yeah. Uh, his first experience with television animation, MTV Downtown, where he served as story editor and writer, yielded an Emmy nomination and allowed Kirstick to pursue his own series, Magus XLR, a show that had everything he loved from his youth. Robots. Time traveling. Aliens, and over-the-top comedy. Cartoon Network loved the idea. Obviously not enough to give it a third season. Bastards. <laughs> uh, and Kirstick was given his own little sci-fi sandbox to play in. That is, until he moved on to play in George Lucas's much larger sandbox, where he wrote on Star Wars, The Clone Wars. That's cool. Boom. Good, good man. Boy, he, hit the big time. See, even George Lucas knew this man had talent. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, he then got back together with the team that worked on Megas XLR to work on a new series for Disney, Motor City. He currently balances his time between film, television, video game, and comic book projects. Right? Like, he's got his, like, toes dipped into four different pools here. It really sucks because the I just found this out, you know, uh, re-watching this show for this episode. I had no idea that Megas actually didn't have a definitive ending. I just thought, you know, I, when I was a younger, as a teenager, I had watched up to a certain point and then just kind of, I got busy with other things. Like, no, that, I remember the last episode that I watched is, yeah, the, the final episode. And while I, like I said earlier, it's a really good episode. Yep. Um, it's an episode that the, like I said earlier, the writers knew they weren't getting another season so they just went all out with these final two episodes and they're very well done the story is a, has a darker tone than the rest of the series uh where coop kind of has to face his inner and outer demons mm -hmm. and it's just a very dark tone for the show in comparison uh, to all its other episodes and in a way ending on that is really cool you know, they went out with a bang, in my opinion. Sure, it's not a perfect ending, but it kind of gives you that idea of they've continued on having misadventures and just getting into more shenanigans. Right. You know, and you want to think that eventually they do go on to save the future from the Glorfed. Like, and maybe she repairs the... Okay, so that's <laughs> one of the things we did not mention is why this time-traveling robot is stuck not being able to travel back in time. So what happened, they, they do show what happened, <laughs> where she was like, what happened to the time drive? And he's like, time drive? And then he has a flashback and he remembers as he was fixing Megas, he found the damaged time drive and he uses it as a pinata. 
Yeah, he's just, and breaks it. He's even just fucking more. hitting the shit out of it because he's like, it's not working, and just fucking, it's like I don't know what the fuck this is, and he's just repeatedly beaten with a bat, and he's like, oh yeah, I couldn't fix that. I couldn't fix it, so I got rid of it. <laughs> so the whole thing is like Kiva is trying to find a time drive anywhere she can in this show, uh, so she can fix it. Mm -hmm. um, man, like beyond just having like really decent action scenes, uh, pretty funny comedy. I remember there's a scene that I absolutely laughed my ass off when I was a kid. Or sorry, a teenager watching this, um, where they have this this sphere that has a button on it that basically the button gets pressed, Earth the uh, the moon is going to get pressed into the Earth by this <laughs> giant rocket, and so uh, Coop's you know gl uh, gloating in front uh, to the glorfed commander or the war chief. He's like, you mean this doomsday button? And he accidentally like fumbles it in his hand. He's Bounce, he's trying to juggle it. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. It lands on his jeans, like right in front of his, like on top of his crotch. And he's just, everyone in the car is like, oh, good. And he lets out a, uh, lets out a sigh of relief, only to realize his gut presses the button down. And, and they just kind of, you hear the car screech like, <laughs> it just starts going off. <laughs> and I don't know why. I laughed so hard oh at that God. scene. He just Pajora's masked the entire fucking planet. Yep. Um, <laughs> obviously, they get out of that. Dawn of the um, first day. But oh man. Everyone like, has three days left to get their shit done. And if you don't travel back in time before then, Fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> There's, beyond just all of that, the music. I was showing you a little bit of the music before we started recording, and the soundtrack for this show is awesome. Mm -hmm. It's full of, like, heavy metal guitar riffs, uh, some EDM uh, type things. Mm -hmm. uh, you, what did you say earlier? It sounded like it's something like from Shinedown? The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of them <laughs> has a song that I swear is just Shinedown must have heard it and been like, huh, we could fucking rip that easy. <laughs> like it's, it has a, it has an incredibly similar riff. Yeah. Um, it's got uh, some tracks with like sound effects that remind me of something that like static X would do, where it's just a lot of repetitive, like down, 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 down. There's some like electric EDM stuff. It's like yeah, you push it. It's there's just so much about the show to like, and only being 26 episodes, it's I think it's a pretty quick watch you can get through it in a week watch a couple episodes a day yeah uh, that's what i did to rewatch all of this they are surprisingly long episodes like yeah, they like are 20, actually like 26 a episodes they're yeah. like a full like yeah 25 minutes something like that like yeah. per episode which is crazy because if that show had a half hour time slot that got very little like advertisements and commercials in there thank god and uh because normally most like cartoons or at least even anime anymore they're like what 20 minutes Right, like this one felt like long. I was like, man, these episodes go on. Yeah, surprisingly. Yeah, you know, it's it was up there, man. It was up there as one of my favorite like shows on Cartoon Network at the time. Yeah. Um, not not like you know Ed and Eddie because we'll go into you know we'll do that that show one of oh, these days. Oh hell yeah, Ed and um, Eddie. Oh my god. Yeah, it's it is kind of sad, especially with like the way they said that it went down where at the end of its life got put on to like a, a, a near midnight or an after midnight time slot. Mm -hmm. And because of that, like any popularity that the show did have or what its ratings were at, they move it to a fucking late ass time slot and yep. that just destroyed the ratings. Yep. So then now that the ratings are bad, they can be like, look, the ratings aren't what they used to be. Clearly the people don't like it. And we've got Teen Titans and we've got Ben 10 already. So <laughs> you Deuces. get what I'm saying here, right? Yeah. This, some people have been talking about like, what if uh, Adult Swim can get their, sh uh, get their hands on this show? But like, they can't. That's I know. The problem. I, I know they can't, but like, what like, if they if could? They did, if they did a name change. <laughs> That'd be, yeah. Megas double XL, baby. Um, <laughs> just, I think Adult Swim would be some of the best people to get a hold of this show because they can just, they, like they did with Samurai Jack, you know, yes. take the base, you know, take the concepts and just give it a little bit more of like an adult twist, like a, you know, even uh, more a, adult even a themes movie, to it. Just like a, a 45 minute movie or something that wraps things up would oh, be yeah. great. A hundred percent, dude. Um, you know, we talked about the Easter eggs 
early on. Let me let me talk to you about some Easter eggs. We did talk about how the logo Pop TV is smashed or destroyed, mm -hmm. uh, or their buildings are destroyed, or their events are destroyed. Every episode <laughs> is kind of like a fuck you to MTV. Yep. Uh, it's wonderful. I laugh every time I see it. Um, <laughs> There are episodes, uh, there's one episode in particular that's a reference to Halo, uh, where they actually do find a giant Halo ring out in the oh, middle of space, cool. and there's no one there, but they can tell, like, oh, this place is a, it's a giant storage facility, like, mm -hmm. with all this digital information across the world, that they can tell, like, people lived there, but they can't find anyone now. They do end up finding these uh, robotic parasites like they look like uh long like dragons or like worms stuff like that mm -hmm. and that is a reference to the flood uh, basically that something like something lived on that ring but yeah. were wiped out by this robotic parasite yep and it's such a cool dark it's one of the very first darker episodes or darker toned episodes of the show. Mm -hmm. uh, that was really cool. There's a Power Rangers parody episode with the yes, S Force. It's kind cool. of it's kind of a mixture of Power Rangers and oh my god, what um, was that? Like uh, there was Big another Bad show. Beetleborgs. No, no, there no. was another show like uh, with with uh, oh my god with a team of fighters piloting mechs. Uh, oh, with all uh, cat Voltron. Based. Voltron. Yeah, it's very it's a weird mix of Power Rangers and Voltron because yeah, they do have like the uh, the the robot pieces that come together. Yep, and the fact that uh, they combine with Megas in order to defeat what's based off like Lord Zed or yep. like a standard Power Rangers. <laughs> Except Megas kind of forcibly <laughs> combines with them. Like he shoves his hand into the cat, tears him a new yeah. asshole. Yeah, is basically, what it yes. Is. And the the people the pilots are like, oh god, no, my <laughs> robot. He's being worn like a boot. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's such a funny like. He's like, hey, I got an idea. Just go with it. Back uh, that ass up and let me put my fist through it so I can wear you. Like like a glove. <laughs> he does swear <laughs> some of these things like a glove. And he's like, Say hey, we combined now. You're doing some fun stuff with your significant other, huh? Oh, huh? God. <laughs> Down, Brent. Back uh, that ass up and let me <laughs> use you as a glove. Uh, there's a Sailor Moon parody episode where they actually have like a Sailor Moon transformation sequence and yes. it has like one of the characters like spinning around and around as she falls down. Yes. And you see Jamie just like staring at her. And like all the flashing strobe lights on his face, and he's just like, huh. he's like, huh, what, what, what's going on here? <laughs> and still falling. And then even her own psyche is like, what are, you, what are you doing? Why are you falling over there? We're over here. <laughs> Being dramatic. Oh man, there's also um, Transformers uh, parody episode where uh, he has to fight against these two heavily uh, respected giant robot knights. Mm -hmm. Who, fun fact, are voiced. By the uh, voice actors for Optimus Prime and Megatron from the old Transformers cartoon. Oh, cool. Yeah, like one of them, like they're each based similarly off their designs as well. Yeah. So when I heard that, I'm like, holy shit. That's that is, cool. That's awesome. Um, there's a Sonic, uh, there's a Sonic parody character called Augie the Adorable Aardvark. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's a Mario Brothers parody. The uh, there's a there's a parody of the Mario Brothers called the Fabio Brothers. Uh, there's a Godzilla villain. There's a villain based off of Godzilla. Uh, there is a villain. We, we talked about the Modoc villain based off Bruce Campbell. Yeah, uh, featuring of, Bruce Campbell. Uh, one of the final the final villain is actually you know spoiler alert, evil Coop. Coop goes to the future, an alternate future, where Coop decided that after beating the Glorfed, oh, he yeah. he decided like he needed to his lust for fighting wasn't uh, wasn't it, it wasn't extinguished. So he went on to try and find more powerful opponents to fight. He ended up abandoning Megas, mm -hmm. getting a new mech. He gets that, a new uh, one that actually is based off of uh, Shar from Gundam's uh, Sasabi. Uh, Sazabi, yeah, it's red, black, and has the number thirteen painted on it. While Megas had the number twelve, those are the biggest ones that I was able to, you know, find. And it's oh, and oh god, there actually is um, there was some device that was the exact same design as the Allspark from the old nineteen eighty uh, Transformer show. Oh yeah. Uh, so like, there's so many pop culture references in this show. It feels mm -hmm. like a celebration of these other things in wrapped in this one goofy robot. Show. Right. Which is what they, I mean, what they originally said they set out to do is they just wanted to take everything that they loved and put it into a show. And, uh, I think they did just that. Like, 
they weren't necessarily super secretive oh, no. about it or really low key. Like they were abundantly like, yes, this is what this is. <laughs> oh yeah, <There's, laughs> like, I just cool. I think I just also just remembered. Um, there's a parody of Fast and Furious like in there too. There's a character that is a, is friends of Coop, but he does kind of remind me of uh, you know Dom oh, from yeah. the Fast and Furious franchise. Okay, yeah. um, this show is just goofy. You know, like you'd expect like Coop treats Megas like it's his car. Mm-hmm. He will drive it down, you know, the streets in New Jersey, <laughs> but it's just him stomping around. Just fucking shit up. He stops at stoplights, <laughs> like, or he goes through the drive through with Megas, or he goes to a car wash, flips them, like, you know, a couple quarters, like, hey, don't, don't, uh, you know, be, be easy on the waxing there. <laughs> and these, these teenagers are like, what? <laughs> like... We're not washing this. <laughs> this, is, this giant do I, mech. Do I have to wax the penis? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Man, honestly, Megas is here. I, actually, you know what? Tell me, tell me honestly what your thoughts are on the show. Like, I know you didn't get too far into it. No. But... And again, I feel like it definitely shows that it's a product of its time. Like the things that they wanted to do back then in the early 2000s which was basically make a slightly more modern more edgier 90s cartoon um the animation and a lot of the dialogue didn't quite appeal to me like it had it had its moments where it was kind of funny but overall it still felt like i was watching a 90s cartoon that i just wasn't super into and it's right. i feel like the animation unfortunately was just not for me in that way a lot of those cartoons i just i don't know i couldn't get around that there's still something about it that's like a like an associative memory right sort of thing where like i just remember as a kid not really giving a shit for that kind of animation and i found myself going yeah well i still don't give a shit about this now but (laughs) the things that were cool like uh, all of the different references and stuff totally make this show worth watching not so much for the things that are happening, but just for the pure nostalgia of, hey, that's cool that they used that, or I love the way that they uh, that they drew this, or something right. like every now and then there's some cool shit in there that I'm like, there are reasons to watch it. I just don't think for me, unfortunately, it was the characters or the story. Yeah, like you, these characters don't have depth you know they're not like they're not anime characters you don't know their backstory it's just kind of like a villain of the week type right. show with a slightly overarching story like how old are these guys supposed to be they're like college students so right? coop is at first you think like coop may be like 18 or 19 years old uh, but he might be in his early 20s yeah but like the man is big he lives with his mom who he you never seen the show you hear her like Coop lives in the basement. Yeah, yep. He's and, one of those. Yeah, and it's beyond that. Like, I don't know. Like, he, I think he's in his like early twenties. Yeah, like he would have or, to be. Yeah, mid, early to mid twenties. Uh, he's just a guy who that who stayed home and uh, he takes care of his mom or he lets his mom take care of him and he's a good he's a good dude yeah he's a good kid like he's even he, he has said things like oh god my mom's gonna kill me and so it makes me think like is he younger than he really is like uh, i don't know maybe i mean parents be parents don't matter how old you get they're gonna kill you if you do something anyway that's true you know what's you know let me let me tell you some crazy things brent right now on google in a total of 53 reviews megas xlr has an average rating a five out of five. Okay. Damn. Yeah. There are, I, but I will look here. I do see there's one or two four star reviews, mm-hmm. but the rest are five out of uh, five out of five, uh, with an IMDB rating of 8.3 out of 10. Uh, the top review here, uh, goes to a review by Hata Zolzilla, uh, five stars. I want a reboot. The homage, or in many cases, diss of other mecha-related anime series are some of the most fondly remembered by fans of the series. You need to turn off your brain when you watch this, since compared to other no-nonsense mecha animes like Gundam, this one is filled with the brim of nonsense. So much so that it's good. A parody of the mecha anime genre to its core, right down to its opening intro montage for every episode. Oh, there's also a super funny parody of Sailor Moon and Gotcha Man in this as well. I love that intro song, by the way, too. Yeah. The, when it just, 
you just hear like dun 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 and then just like the drums kick in like and then just a bunch of guitars going nuts and coops like driving fast slamming his head down this is definitely like a a heavy metal influenced right sort of show and they had some great like musicians on there because some of those riffs are like if they were to be like applied to how music are like music is now just with uh more more clarity and just uh i don't know being more grandiose oh dude they'd be fucking so cool right if i were to give it a rating though out of 10 i give the show a seven out of 10 seven out of 10 really so the reason why i it's a seven to me is because it is enjoyable i think it is a very enjoyable show the the first commenter that uh the, sorry the first reviewer i mentioned uh you kind of said it right. You do have to turn your brain off a little bit with the show because mm-hmm. sometimes it is just goofy. Like Coop's there in this situation just to incite this week's villain of the week. Um, there are a lot of things that this show could have done better. Um, a lot of it does come down to Coop gets his butt kicked by the villain, and then all of a sudden he's like, "You know what, you." Yeah, you made me late to my thing. You made me go to the DMV, and now I'm <laughs> mad. And he just kind of goes into like a frenzy and just starts beating up on yeah. the the villain. And then boom, he wins. Yep. It it very much is very formulaic. On in most episodes, what gets me is the culture, you know, pop culture references, uh, the Easter eggs, and just the comedy of the show. These characters are flawed in many ways and the show is just meant to be a goofy fun time if you can turn your brain off a little bit yeah so that's I why would... i think it's yeah it's you know what no, let me change that 7.5 <laughs> i was even gonna say i was like yeah i mean for me I, I don't know i feel like i feel like you're right on the money i'd give it around like somewhere between a six and a seven i think would be where i'm at just because there's so many things that don't appeal to me now maybe it would have appealed to me more back then if i watched it when i was younger but uh i didn't i missed out and uh now i'm old so here i am doing a podcast hey <laughs> <laughs> i want to thank everybody for listening uh thank you so much thank you to the barn for having us as part of their wonderful network we and love you guys Thank you to BetterHelp for being a sponsor of this episode. You can go to BetterHelp.com forward slash The Barn to save yourself 10% off at checkout on your first month of service. So get you you something good for yourself. Yeah, get you some good good stuff up in your brain. Also, thank you to Schminkadelic for the use of our intro and outro. You can find more of his dance and trance on Apple Music and Spotify under Schminkadelic. He is a cool dude that would also like robots and uh he would love to drive one you dig giant robots yes we dig giant robots they all dig chicks dig (laughs) giant robots all of them (laughs) who wouldn't man be like wow man dude i want to be that guy also make sure you go like our socials on facebook instagram tiktok any of it x we're there <laughs> <laughs> not twitter x. anymore it's x yeah that app is kind of dead to me go honestly li- like, like us on x yeah i see the uh the logo pop up and my brain doesn't even register what it is i'm just like man <laughs> like it's <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i don't know how i feel about that to be honest like, i hate it well hey thanks again everybody for listening once again this has been the men of zen my name is brent and i'm phyllis x l r phil phyllis <laughs> <laughs> I'm Phyllis XLR. <laughs> nice, Brent. <laughs> Br- Brenticus XLM. XLM X- Radio. XM Radio. <laughs> uh, stay Zen, my friend. Stay For more media entertainment podcasts like the one you just heard, check out The Barn. Anime, music, sports, and video games, The Barn has everything that you need.